Time nuts are people deeply interested in exact timekeeping. They usually use atomic clocks to get to this holy grail. In today's video, we will get precise time without internet access or a personal atomic clock. Instead, we will use 5 to 10 dollar GPS receivers. The atomic clocks we will use, fortunately, are paid for by other people. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, bringing you a new episode with fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you'll always sit in the first row. In this video we will discuss Typical ways to get time for our gadgets, starting with imprecise methods. We will build a time reference consisting of a Raspberry Pi and a $5 GPS dongle that provides exact time in the millisecond range for the next 10,000 years. Then we will use a $10 module to increase precision by factors. And finally, we will distribute this precise time across our network to other devices like PCs, Raspberries or even ESP32s. We will use the network time protocol for that purpose. And if you want to become a time nut, this is an ideal entry point, because I will give you some hints for possible next steps. The easiest and cheapest way is to use a microcontroller for timing. We all do that if we use delay 1000 for one second. This time is only relative and it is based on the clock generator of the chip. Usually these are called XCOs for oscillators. This method has two significant deficits. If we want absolute time, we have to enter the actual time after every boot. And typical clock generators for MCUs have huge tolerances of 10 to 40 ppm. These tolerances are temperature dependent. 40 ppm is 21 minutes per year. Horrible for a Swiss. A better possibility is to use such a real-time clock chip or module. They typically use 32.768 kHz resonators with similar deviations. Their advantage is that they run on batteries and keep the time during power down. But what if we want better precision? We could use better oscillators. That is typically done in quartz watches. Because they have to be temperature compensated, they are called TXCOs. Their precision normally is 1 ppm or lower. 1 ppm is 31.5 seconds per year. Already better for a Swiss. Unfortunately, price increases with precision. If we want more, we must choose OCXOs, Oven Controlled Crystal Oscillators. They can go down to 0.01 ppm or less. 0.01 ppm is 315 milliseconds per year. But these devices are big and constantly have to be heated and calibrated. Next are atomic clocks, like rubidium frequency standards. Their drift is only milliseconds per year. Again, they are expensive, big and power hungry. Time nuts, of course, have more than one of those in their basement. However, I only want their position, not their cost and space. Fortunately, each GPS satellite has its built-in atomic clock. And even better, all these clocks are regularly adjusted by master clocks. So they are stable for thousands of years. Our GPS receivers need these signals to determine their position precisely. In addition to location, their signals can also be used to get precise time. It can be read from GPS receivers over a serial connection. Fortunately, most GPS chips use the standard NMEA format that can be decoded by software on the Raspberry Pi. That is what we will do as a first step. We need one of those GPS dongles, software and a bit of time. Because these dongles do not offer an antenna connector, they must be placed where they can see many satellites. Then we have to execute these five steps. 
You will find a write-up of all the commands and tests needed in the video description. So let's quickly go through them. The dongle can be inserted into any USB ports of any Pi. I recommend using a USB cable to get some distance between the noise of the Raspberry Pi and the delicate GPS receiver. If you use a Pi Zero, you anyway must use an adapter cable for micro USB. Next we have to update the Pi and install GPSD, GPSD Client and Crony. The GPS daemon decodes GPS data and provides time, location, altitude and speed from the GPS module. GPSD client offers test utilities for GPS signals. The NTP daemon for time sync is called Crony. It can handle several time sources and select the most reliable one. In step 3 we should already see NMEA messages from the GPS dongle. You can continue if you see your location. Keep in mind that it takes a while for the GPS receiver to be synchronized. If you have not used it for months, this can take many minutes. In step 4 we make sure that GPSD automatically starts at boot time. And in step 5 we configure Crony. This line does the job. Offset is the compensation for data processing between the arrival of the GPS signal and the time output. Because GPS modules only use 9600 baud, it takes a while for all information to be processed by the GPS software. For timekeeping we only need GPRMC packages. They provide date and time in UTC and fix status. Delay is the time an NTP package takes from a requester to the NTP server and back. These parameters cannot easily be determined without having a precise time for comparison. So our first precise clock will run precisely for the next 10,000 years. However, in the short run its precision is only a few 10 milliseconds. And its jitter is also many milliseconds. Good enough for many applications, but not for all. That is why we will fire stage number 2. We use a different GPS module with a serial connection plus a pulse output. Standard modules provide one pulse every second. That is why it is called PPS. Its advantage is that its edges are pretty precise. To use this information for our purpose, we have to execute a few additional steps. Wiring is much different than before. We have to connect ground, 3.3V, RX, TX and the PPS signal to the Pi's header. 3.3V is very important because the Pi's pin definitely are not 5V resistant. Here you see the wiring diagram. My module exposes RX and TX via a growth connector. The PPS signal has to be wired separately. Because I do my tests in the basement, I use an external antenna connected via a pigtail. Keep in mind, these are active antennas. They need a 3 to 5 volt DC voltage because they amplify the weak GPS signals. The advantage is that we can extend the coax cable for a few meters without problems. In step 2 we must enable the Pi's serial connection and define where we connect our PPS signal. For all standard raspberries we could use the serial connection to manage the Pi with the terminal. Because this would conflict with our GPS data we have to disable this function in raspberry config. After rebooting the hardware is ready and we can install the needed software in step number 3. In addition to before we have to install PPS tools to deal with the PPS signal. In step 4 we test if the PPS signal is working. Step 5 is similar to the previous installation. Here we should see the GPS data. Again we give it a few minutes till usable packages are delivered. Most GPS receivers have LEDs that change color if a fix is reached. Next we use GPSD to display our position. In step number 6 we ensure 
that GPS automatically starts right after boot. And in step 7, we configure Crony. This time we insert two lines. The second line uses the more precise PPS signal and therefore is preferred. If the PPS signal does not work, Crony uses line number 1 as a backup. Crony C sources shows what happens. The GPS signal is detected and put on standby. And the more precise PPS signal is used. Here you see the difference in accuracy. The GPS signal provides milliseconds precision and the PPS signal provides nanoseconds. As wished. Aspiring time knots have many possibilities to improve these numbers. First, they could use specialized GPS receivers optimized for timekeeping. They use some tricks to select the best satellites, for example. Because these chips are not often used, they are much more expensive than the standard ones. By chance, I found used ones for a reasonable price. Let's hope that they are not fake when they arrive. Also here you see the exponential price curve of precision. And you can play with the offset and delay values to get the signal closer to reality. As a last step, we check if Crony synchronizes the system time of our device. If you want to profit from your precise time source, you can perform step 8 and allow devices on your network to use your newly built NTP source. On the other devices, you must insert the IP address of your NTP server instead of the official ones on the internet. Now you definitely are a time nut trainee with potential. Congratulations! If you want to go the next step to GPS disciplined oscillators, you are covered by my video number 336. And if you want to see where you need picoseconds precision signals, you can watch my Q0100 videos where I built a ground station for a geostationary satellite. In today's video we started with very imprecise timers and went up the precision ladder to nanosecond precision. For a few dollars. Because others spend the money for expensive atomic clocks. A very satisfying project if you ask me. That was all for today. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. If you found this video useful or interesting, please support the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.